Got some petrol, got back into the car and then won the race. That information fairly soon. Oh, he's almost in trouble. And we're running one, two, three, four. Have we got a race going here, folks? And one of the most incredible lineups of touring cars, I think that it's been our pleasure to see, is now gracing the pit road of the Sandown circuit. It's the Hang 10 400. For the Marlborough Holden dealer team, we'll be having Peter Brock and Johnny Harvey. For the Ford dealer team, Alan Moffat and Colin Bond. Every name you can think of. Just a few seconds to go now for the Hang 10 400 here at Sandown International Motor Racing Circuit. On the front row as the Prime Minister drops the flag, away they go. It's uh, Peter Brock who gets away nicely and uh, Bob Morris who leads the field. Uh, Peter Brock back into third spot now as Alan Moffat squeezes him out as they come into Repco Corner but Brock gets back inside and Brock is second as they come through, followed through by Alan Moffat. Then they uh, come down with um, Gary Cook, uh, no, it's uh, John Harvey moving up into third position now, ahead of Alan Moffat, so it's Tirana's one, two, three, then the big board of Moffat's, and then the rest of the field screaming out of Holden Corner. A fantastic display of uh, enormous horsepower and, and skill driving of these drivers already as they're on their uh, opening lap. Peter Brock moves to the lead now, over uh, Bob Morris, for the first time over the top of Rothmans in this uh, tremendous race, which of course is over 129 laps. Down through the S's for the first time. Peter Brock leads Bob Morris, then uh, Alan Moffat, who's moved himself up ahead of Harvey now into third position. Harvey is fourth as they sweep down through these long, shallow S's. And um, the next one then would have been um, uh, Gary Cook, and he's followed very closely by uh, Alan Moffat. Two races in one here, and we've got uh, the two Holdens battling it out for the lead, and Bob Morris tucked in the slipstream. Alan Moffat uh, holding off this tremendous uh, uh, attack by John Harvey. Brock keeps Morris out. Morris hops across to the inside. Up in a bumper motor racing with 128 laps to go. One minute, 13 seconds. One minute, 13.3 seconds. 13.3 seconds uh, for that um, uh, opening second lap. Uh, for Peter Brock. So Peter Brock is really starting to put the, uh, the fast laps in right early in the piece. He's going to try and break up the opposition. Peter Brock is one of the masters of long distance racing in Australia. He's one of the only driver to win the big three, Hang 10 400, the um, uh, Hardy Ferrado uh, at uh, Bathurst, and of course the big 500 kilometre race at uh, Phillip Island. And uh, no other driver has ever been able to equal that. He did that uh, three years ago in the Tirana, and now he's uh, hoping to repeat it again. They're very quick down through those S's. It's the first time I've seen Peter Brock bounce his wheels over the inside. Battle rages on out in front with Peter Brock and uh, Bob Morris. But Colin Bond, uh, a very, very heady driver. He's not at all concerned that, uh, that he's not right up there mixing it with the, uh, the very leading cars because it's a long, long way to go and anything can happen. Peter Brock giving a wave there, of course, to uh, signal to uh, the car in front that he's aiming on coming through. A little bit hard sometimes for the drivers of the slower cars to, uh, to tell uh, just how fast a car is coming up behind them or who it might be. So a bit of a wave from the overtaking drivers is quite a good, uh, uh, quite a good signal. John Harvey is doing very well. I think it's the best run we've seen uh, from John. Uh, well, not quite the best for this year because he was going very well at uh, one of the earlier uh, races at um, Oran Park this year before he ran out of petrol, which was a very unfortunate thing for him. And that uh, didn't deter him. He got some petrol, got back into the car and then won the race. That's right. But uh, he's up there in third position and that's, um, uh, judging from the touring car rounds, his best position of the this year extremely well as a backup to Peter Brock who's out in front and uh, although he's tossing him a little bit wide on the corners he's nevertheless keeping uh, Bob Morris in sight and of course providing a buffer between uh, the leading two Tiranas and oh there's bad luck. Well at 10 laps with 12.27 uh, 12, uh, 12 minutes and 27 seconds of racing uh, gone we have Brock in first place, Bob Morris in second place and John Harvey in third place all in Tiranas followed by Alan Moffat the first of the Fords Alan Grice and of course Moffat's teammate Colin Bond in sixth place. Back to you, Adrian Ryan.
and here with Bob Morris diving out of that slipstream to try and take over from Peter Brock at Ripco Corner. But Peter Brock in the Marlborough car, 0.05, um, he uses the number 05, of course, because of his um, association with the Road Safety and Traffic Authority in Victoria, which uses the slogan, turn off before 0.05 indicating the uh, amount of uh, blood alcohol level that you're allowed in Victoria before you can be uh, fined. And uh, Peter Brock has been a great uh, performer for the Road Safety and Traffic Authority, lecturing to young drivers all over Victoria on the, uh, the evils of drink and the, uh, and the way to drive properly. And he's being hounded, and that's about the only word you can say, is really hounded by Bob Morris, who is very clean down through the S's, not um, ragged at all. Bob Morris, the car handling beautiful, beautifully on its lower profile tyres. He uses a slightly lower profile tyre than uh, Peter Brock's car, and um, he says that this gives him a great advantage. And he has, if we can get a very close-up view, perhaps at um, Holden Corner, he has a very interesting um, development on the outside of the wheels. He has a fiberglass scoop built onto the outside of the wheels, and this actually extracts the air from the brakes and helps to cool them down. So we may try and see if we can get a very close up in view. As he goes around on the outside, then right down on the inside, he's pushing Peter Brock as hard as he can go, comes up on the inside now, and he's really going to try and outbreak Brock, but there's no way. Yes, he does, he goes straight through on the inside, oh, a desperate a move. move, but he's made it. He's got through onto the inside, and um, Morris now leads the race for the second time because he led very briefly at the start and now it's Peter Brock's turn. Peter Brock seems to easily pull out of the slipstream and it looks as though Brock just has that edge in power and Bob Morris is relegated back to second spot once more. What an incredible carve up going on at this early stage in the race. They've only done about 15 or 16 laps and, and here they are, these two giants of touring cars out in front there, absolutely carving each other's to, other to bits as though there are only a couple of laps to go. And now it's up to Paul Harrington who has uh, an update on positions and times. Well, with all the chaos of a long distance race, the Fords and Holdens are both running into trouble. Here's Dick Johnson coming up the straight now in third place, but uh, very likely to be making a pit stop. But with uh, 43 minutes and 43 seconds completed of this race, Peter Brock is leading from John Harvey with Dick Johnson there in third place, followed by Murray Carter with Jack Brabham up to uh, fifth and Jim Keogh in sixth. In the class up to 3,000 cc, Laurie Nelson has taken over the lead from Jim Langbeach in his Ford Capri with Bill Evans in the uh, Brian Wood Ford Escort leading the 2,000 cc class. Back to you, Adrian. Well, Charlie O'Brien was sitting here thinking that perhaps he, he should go down to the pits and uh, crank up his Tirana, even if it is down on power, that he just might get a place in this race because they're just dropping out like flies at the moment. And uh, the mortality rate is very high, but uh, all full marks at this stage to John Shepard and his Marlborough Holden dealer team because the Holdens up front there, the red and white cars of Peter Brock and uh, John Harvey are just running like the proverbial clockwork, round and round and round. And the only four that seems to be able to keep anywhere near them is this one of uh, Colin Bowles. But Barry Seaton has moved himself up into fifth place in that Amco Tirana. There's Jack Brabham in the Kudota tractor. Uh, Tirana, car number eight that he will drive, as Adrian mentioned, with Brian Muir in the Hardy Ferrado in three weeks' time. What a sterling performance Jack Rapp is putting in, the old veteran. Well, not so much old, what's 51 years of age? Yeah, uh, 52, uh, is it? Uh, so Betty told me the other day. A beer boy and a, and a magnificent run. Um, I was just going to um, ask Charlie O'Brien that um, perhaps Charlie might be able to tell us when would we expect to see Peter Brock coming in the pitch? When would you have scheduled a pit stop, for instance, for yourself, Charlie? Adrian, we were looking at about 70 to 75 laps, so uh, you've got to basically do more than 65 um, halfway distance because the, the tank size was 28 yep. gallons. But it too, would be very interesting to see what sort of lap times Peter Brock's doing to uh, to see just how hard he is pushing the car. Yes, well, Paul Harrington should be able to get us that information fairly soon. Whoa, he's almost in trouble that time. I don't think I've seen Peter Brock so far out of line for a long time. It must be oil on the circuit because Peter just doesn't do that sort of thing. He doesn't, that's not his style of driving. Didn't seem to worry him too much though, he oh, just well, it uh, chased it. <laughs> Here it <laughs> comes again, so you'll watch now, just see if we can see a, a smudge of oil on the circuit at all. There he goes then, all of a sudden he really whips those wheels. You can see the front wheels turning as he gets that car very crossed up. Oh, doesn't he ever. 
Colin Bond having a bit of difficulty there getting through underneath Dunlop Bridge. A couple of the slower cars, one of them being Williamson, and uh, it's a uh, very, very a tremendous amount of traffic as they come down into Repco Corner. Right, let's watch the scheduled pit stop, as I'm sure it is, for Peter Brock. Let's see that Holden dealer team crew swing into action. The race leader, Peter Brock. We'll get the clock on him, see how long he takes, and then we'll uh, check that time out with various other people on their scheduled stops later. Kerry Luckins can get into position and have a word with Peter Brock while the action's going on. It won't be easy. See how, see how the race leader sees his position at this stage. Jack Bratton just moving out of the pits now, back into the race. There's a little bit of steam coming out from under the bonnet and someone giving the message. It's John Harvey saying he wants to come in next. So Harvey into the lead, but points into the pits, which could mean that he wants to come in next. I uh, hope they were able to tell him that Brock was there because I think uh, it might get a little crowded if Harvey comes around the next time. Harvey going into the pits. So, um... Well, after Peter Brock's pit stop, Johnny Harvey took over the lead, but now that Harvey's in the, uh, in the pits, as soon as Brock, who has now gone out on the track again, comes back around, he will resume his race lead. Well, it's all activity in the pit there for the Marlborough Holden dealer team. Team leader John Shepard leaning over to, uh, to talk to Harvey, who, uh, who wants a drink. Uh, they're busy, they're working hard, but there is no sign of fluster or, or panic or chaos or whatever. It's all proceeding very smoothly according to plan. And there's the race leader, Peter Brock, virtually from start to finish, doing it easily, running away without any possible drama at all. Got the car once sideways down at Danny on the road, had it completely under control and has not put a foot wrong, with 40 laps to go. Right, ten laps to go. Both the uh, Holden dealer team cars passing Jack Bratton, who's back in the race. We saw him uh, overheat several times. The last time was a great gusher of water coming out. There he is, just coming on the camera there behind the two uh, dealer team cars. But he's back out on the track, got up to third position, Jack but has dropped right back with uh, overheating problems. Bob, certainly looks good, um, always looks good, a one-two finish. Yes, it does, and as I said, there'd be uh, Tirana fans in that stand leaping up and down every time they go past. Barry Seaton, our third place holder at the present time. And there's the leaders there, uh, while we've been watching the other pair having their little duel, the, the leaders. And somebody taking Alan a Rice wide line. Is off. Alan Rice is gone, he's... Right off the I think he actually just slipped off the circuit just, there and yeah. uh, couldn't get back on because of the drain. That's right. Oh, gee, he had his heart in his mouth, old bit. And lost the uh, thousand. Did Seaton yeah. see slide through there? No, 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 no. Yes, he did. Did he? See there? Yes, yes there he is. Right. Seaton managed to get through. There. Jansen's, Jansen's there. got through too. Lang Beach and Alan Grice. Well, he's going to do all over again. There's only a couple of laps remaining. So this last one and a half laps could be pretty interesting. Interesting to uh, note, Max, that uh, Peter's, Peter Brock's time is 1.17, which is, uh, what, six seconds uh, off his... Uh, yeah, it's best practice position. lap. Yeah. That's right. Right, one lap to go. The last lap of this very, very gruelling oh. and demanding... Oh, oh Barry Seaton, no, don't oh. take Harvey off too. <laughs> and Gricey goes through how the fortunes can change in the last moments, the dying moments of a race. Barry Seaton, a little nudge there in the tail, and now Alan Grice is getting all desperate by the look of it and <laughs> rushing up deep under brakes. If he clips Brocky in the tail and puts him out, <laughs> I can half the grandstand will descend on him and cut his throat. What a finish. Anything and can he's, happen. Look, he's waving Jansen through. He wants the one wow. two, Brock. Yes, my word. He doesn't want Jansen in there. He wants Harvey up beside him so he can do a one two over the line. Well, he's going to have to slow down, I think, because uh, Harvey's not going to get past that Capri and uh, and Jansen as well. Grice is there too. Well, how the fortunes change. Here comes Harvey. A few hundred metres to go. 
He's going to slow. Brocky's going to have to slow down and let Jansen go past. No, Harvey's rounding up uh, Jansen on the outside. Jansen's woken up by the look of it. And here comes the Holden, Marlborough Holden dealer team. One, two, finish at the end of the hang. 10, 400 for 1978. What a result. For a final uh, report on the unofficial placings at this stage, Paul Harrington. 56 seconds of racing and it's Brock and Harvey leading this at a 1-2 for Marlborough Holden deal, dealer team from Grice and Seaton with Jim Lang Peach winning the three litre class and Peter Williamson in the little Toyota Celica winning the two litre class. He comes down the inside, and Moffat tries to poke down on the inside of Colin Bond, but Morris has won the jump, wait for the crowd reaction. Into the left hand, and now back onto pit straight, the Ford side by side, Morris sideways, but he leads the first lap completed, and he's taken the first lap prize, but Bond at the inside of him, and Brock has now moved up on the inside, and we're running one, two, three, four, and we've got a race going here, folks, on the outside through the turn, and Morris has thwarted a bit there, and watching the side of the door, and leads once again, but he's got Sensational stuff, and I don't know how Morris controlled it. He was hit, put sideways, got it back under control, and this is desperate stuff with 160 to Rock pulling out as he's uh, spearing down the straight. The radar trap showed the fastest car first time through was Pete Gagan. The radar and Foley Alpha was also on the pits, Patrick Mee, who we were there. Okay, here we have the race lead change with Peter Brock, Australian touring car champion, taking over the front running. Bob Morris is back in second. And tailgating is Alan Moffat in car number one. And this is the part of the course where the long legs of the Falcon will really show out. He'll sit in behind Peter Brock, draft, then jump out of the slipstream and try and race him down to the bottom corner. Well, here, here he comes. Goes. Wait for the arrival of Alan Moffat on the inside. He has to take him because Brock is going to be held up by the slower car on the right-hand side. You'll find that Brock has pulled over to the left behind Moffat. Whether he can leave his braking late enough, whether he's put forward to it, I don't think so. He'll be having to stay there, maybe close up a little bit on the brakes. So it's Alan Moffat, who for the first time leads the race. Very, very talented all. Oh, Harvey it decides he's going for broke. The inside will do. Wait for this. This puts whoop, Harvey wisely elected to just ease off the throttle. And he's now taking him up the mountain. This is the great race, and this is the leader in car five, the lead car of the Marlborough Holden dealer team. Peter Brock, and uh, doing it well in front at the present time, and has accumulated, we should mention uh, Evan in the lap leader prize money, um, and other bonuses, nine and a half thousand dollars to this oh, point. 8,250 in practice, he could retire now and still come away well and truly in front. Oh, Peter Brock, and he has scooped the pool as far as the Ingersoll Rand money is concerned, taking all of their four thousand dollars, so he's doing exceptionally well. The fans, Fickle in some cases and uh, loyal in others. Um, stand and salute. The man who's going to go on and win the Hardy Front 1000 over the top of the mountain. There'll be no slip ups here. Peter Comes Brock. Down through the top part of the section, acknowledging the cheers. You've got the fans on the mountain. With a lap lead on the second place getter, the Craven Mile to runner of uh, Alan Grice, and uh, three laps on the third place getter, the Brian Wood Falcon of Murray Cup. Everything's in good shape through the final left hand and the open spaces of Conrad Strait. 
and Peter Brock is headed for victory. The chequered flag for the 1978 Hardy Ferrado 1000. Not worrying about terminal speed, how far he can get through the radar trap and what speed that he'll achieve in this last lap. This is as an important lap as the lap he cut in qualifying. Coming down to the final corner where everyone in pit lane is standing to salute a driver who deserves to win here today. John Harvey has dropped uh, back behind uh, Brock, so they're not shooting for a 1-2 camera photo finish, which it wouldn't be. The last corner comes up. The chequered flag unfolds for the 1978 champion, Peter Brock. Up to 163 laps, Peter Brock, winner of the great race.